and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is Thursday, December 17th, 2020. I am Andrew Hansen alongside Shane Caldwell, and this is our Week 15 Main Slate podcast for the running backs. And Shane, like I said on the uh, quarterbacks show, it's about uh, 10 inches of snow outside my window. It's December. It's time to you know get get aggressive on the ground here and uh, and pound the rock. So are you ready to make some selections? I think it is running back season when you get into the December, late December. It is definitely running back season, and yeah, there's some there's some awesome running back plays this week. So yeah, we're we're fired up for these running backs. Excellent. So as we normally do, we go from most expensive to the cheapest as we look at the DraftKings and FanDuel pricing for the for the running backs. So where are you looking on the on the high end this week? Well, we say uh, which guys we're looking for in December. It usually starts with uh, Derrick Henry here. Uh, you know, all of a sudden now Derrick Henry, he's getting his full workload. He's just completely crushing teams, you know, up against Jacksonville. He puts up 215 yards, you know, and two touchdowns. Uh, so he just completely just annihilated that team. And they're in another great matchup against Detroit Lions this week. Another matchup where, OK, Tennessee can do whatever they want. You want to pass the ball for a touchdown? Do it. You want to run the ball for a touchdown? You want to pound it? And, and <laughs> dealer's just, choice. <laughs> yeah, it's just dealer's choice. And that was the same thing we talked about last week at Jeans Jackson. Well, what, what are they going to do? You know, uh, so Derrick Henry uh, looking like a smash spot here. I think his ownership is going to get really high. That's the only thing you have to keep your eye keep that in mind. But I think on cash, he's pretty hard to fade. If you want to get different on GPPs, you can make the argument for that. But because of the matchup here and just such a, such a blatant uh, mismatch and uh, the way that scheme is, they pretty much just line up and say, hey, we're going to run it and you're not going to be able to stop us, you know. Um, so, yeah, to look for Derrick Henry to have another monster game here. Um, I'm not sure if he's really going to need to get over that 200-yard mark, and I'm not sure that they need to give him 25 to 30 carries in this game, though. Especially, I look at if Matthew Stafford's out and Chase Daniel's in, I'm not sure that I'm that confident in, in Chase Daniel being able to be competitive in this game. So that's just one thing I'm looking at here. But I think in terms of just starting your cash lineups and looking for the stability and the guaranteed production, that starts with Derrick Henry. And then if you're looking at GPP strategy, just because I think his ownership is going to be approaching, like on FanDuel, it might be the high 30s to 40%. I think it's going to get really high. And if you if you fade him and don't pay the $10,200 on FanDuel, then your lineup will be a little bit more unique there. So that's something to keep in mind. But other than that, yeah, you got to love Derrick Henry here. I'm assuming you're on the same page here because this is he's kind of like the elephant in the room this week. Yeah. yeah, it's just a matter of um what do they decide to do? Dealer's choice. If they want to keep it rolling with him, he could absolutely get 202 again. So um it makes sense what you said in terms of favoring him in cash, looking elsewhere in GPP, because you can save a ton of money as soon as you go down one notch and over on DraftKings. Uh, you know, I'm looking at Alvin Kamara, who's $2,100 cheaper, and we haven't said his name much recently. I haven't played him at all since Taysom Hill got under center, but finally last week, they showed that they could connect through the air, which is what you really need with Kamara. He caught seven for 44 against Philly, and he had 11 carries for 50. Now they're playing Kansas City, who you can beat on the ground, 26th in the league in yardage allowed per game. Uh, so... Uh, Kamara, to me, makes a lot of sense on DraftKings in what could be a shootout against Kansas City. Uh, so I'm liking Kamara this week. He should be pretty fresh, too, because it's not like he's had that heavy workload. Like, they'd ever give him, like, 20-plus catches, you know. So Kamara should be up for a huge game. Yeah, and it, it sets up for that, you know, for his passing, uh, pass uh, catching ability there in this game if they're playing from behind, too, in the shootout game. So, all right, I'm going to go to another guy, another familiar guy we've been talking about every every single week, it seems like. And every time we mention him, we laugh because we've been yeah. talking about this guy since the spring, basically. And uh, I remember when you asked me way back in the NFL draft, one of the first times we ever talked, you said, well, what, what draft picks did you like? you know, that you think are going to be good in fantasy. The first name I mentioned was Jonathan Taylor, and I'm still talking about him today all the way, you know, almost Christmas time towards the end of the year here. So Jonathan Taylor finally did what we were expecting him to do. You know, we knew he was finally going to get the workload, and he bust off that long touchdown that I've been, you know, uh, just willing him to get all, all year a 62-yard touchdown. He gets 20 carries for 150 yards, two touchdowns. You know, so, you know, it showed the, the combination of his speed and athleticism and his power. 
And you combine that with this offensive line is finally clicking and gelling with their dominant run blocking. Um, and when you get him in a good matchup like you did last week against the Las Vegas Raiders, who are kind of beat up on defense, you see what happens. And now all of a sudden he's got the Houston Texans, who are also beat up on defense and really bad against the run. So he's looking like in a great spot. And the guy's price still re- remains pretty reasonable. You know, it's obviously went up over the weeks, but at 7,400 on FanDuel and 7,200 on DK, I think Jonathan Taylor is one of the top uh, plays this this uh, week. Um, in week 13 against Houston, he only got 13 carries, but he still put up 91 yards. And he did catch a, a long pass for a touchdown that week. So the nice thing is he can get involved in the passing game too. But I expect him to get near that 20 carry mark. And if he gets near the 20 carry mark here again, that's going to be he's going to be able to smash the value against Houston and Indianapolis really needs to win this game to, to keep pace for the playoff race and for the for the division race here. So it's important game for Indianapolis at home. Um, they're big favors here. Seven point favorites with the 29 implied total in one of the higher scoring 51 over unders this week. So so it's Jonathan Taylor week again. And, uh, you know, we definitely were on him last week and, and he produced. He didn't disappoint. Yeah, he really did. Another guy we've talked about a lot this year, James Robinson. And it's funny because last week you and I had flipped uh, the guy that we were discussing. And now we're kind of back to square one here with you on Taylor. And and I get to talk about James Robinson. And, you know, it's not the best matchup on paper against Baltimore, 13-point underdogs. But look what Cleveland did to Baltimore on the ground last week. Chubb and Hunt combined for 213 yards and four touchdowns on the ground and through the air. Just give me 60% of that for James Robinson, who dominates that backfield in snaps and touches, and he will smash value. So I like James Robinson here as the guy that they just they go to all the time. You know, he's basically a lock for over 20 touches almost every week, right around that mark. He dipped a little bit last week, but uh, I like a bounce back spot here for him. Yeah, I mean, he's got to be probably the best rookie undrafted rookie free agent you know running back ever i would think there's probably a few other right guys up there yeah there. but yeah he's one of the biggest surprises all year you know and in, in, fa- in the fantasy world and real world football too um next guy i'm going to go to another guy that i really like but he's been been injured and disappointing most of the year this whole team has been really i'm looking at miles sanders I'm going back to that game, Philadelphia at Arizona. And I'm looking at Miles Sanders as, okay, Arizona's a pretty tough matchup. They're pretty fast, you know, defense. They've been decent against, uh, you know, containing running backs. But I really like Philadelphia with Jalen Hurts and Miles Sanders running that read option, running the two-man game there, really causing a lot of issues of misdirection and, and guessing games for the defense here. Um, so I like the combination of those two and Miles Sanders being explosive. You've seen what can happen last last week as he bust off one, a, a huge run last week and puts up production. Only 14 carries for 115 yards and two touchdowns last week there against New Orleans, who's a really shut down de- type defense. Um, so I like the scheme here. I think they'll get him more involved in the passing game. He finally got five targets and caught four balls for 21 yards last week. So that's a good sign. He's great in the passing game. Um, so in this type of matchup, which they'll probably be pat down and come playing from behind, they're still going to have to run the ball with them. They're going to run the read option and pass the ball to him. So I think Miles Sanders can get there again this week, and I expect this to be a pretty high-scoring game. And I think that he's going to be a little bit lower owned this week, even though he had a good game last week, just because of the perceived uh, tough matchup here. Um, so I think Miles Sanders is another good play this week. All right, uh, next guy that I'm looking at, Uh, comes from your neck of the woods up there in Detroit, DeAndre Swift. And he's going up against Tennessee, not a strong defense. It's a question mark, though, because of health and touches. So he's a GPP option for me. Last week, he only got 11 touches. But do you think he'll get more touches this week and be more viable? Yeah, he's. I think he's back full go. He's not on the injury report. And I think he's a full go. He's recovered from the illness and the concussion. And they know that he's their best chance of winning. That he's uh, by far when you see him catch, you know, when you see him touch the ball, he's by far the best running back. He's dynamic. He's one of the better young running backs in the league. Really, the offensive line is blocked well. They've opened up holes for him. He gets involved in the passing game, which probably would be important if they get down big, like we expect here. 
And I like that you're going to get DeAndre Swift at much lower ownership because p- people are completely forgot about him because he's been injured for, you know, a couple weeks. And then all of a sudden he didn't really, he, you know, he was kind of limited last week. But now he's a full go. I expect his snap share uh, and his target share and, and, and carry share, everything to go up this week. Um, and and he should be able to get some production here. And, yeah, he's definitely a big play threat. And it's nice how they, they give him some goal line carries as well when he's healthy. So that even though they like Adrian Peterson there, they really prefer – uh, uh, DeAndre Swift because he's a lot shiftier and quicker to avoid tacklers down at the goal line. Even though Adrian Peterson's big, he doesn't really avoid tacklers. He just tries to run people over. So, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I like DeAndre Swift here. I think he's sneaky uh, and he'll be he'll be he'll be very low owned and he could definitely produce. Okay, who else do you like who's a little bit cheaper? I mean, talk about a breakout that we've been waiting for all year. This is another guy we talked about way early in the year. We liked him, and it's the rookie Cam Akers. You know, somehow he got in uh, in, in McVeigh's, uh, you know, doghouse earlier in the year. You know, I don't know if he was injured or what the deal was, but he, you know, it's like they were saving him for the end of the year and it worked out because, you know, that game last week, you know, we knew he was going to get a, a, a larger snap share and, you know, more carries. It was trending that direction, but we, I don't think anyone thought he was going to get the 29, you know, 29 carries and just completely you know, annihilate the New England Patriots who, you know, hasn't, they haven't been dominant against the run, but they're competitive. And he goes 29 attempts, 171 yards. And he puts up a monster fantasy game, you know, a big fantasy game without getting a touchdown. So imagine if he just gets even where anywhere close to that and he gets a touchdown. And of course he's going up against the New York Jets. We're expecting this to be a huge lopsided blowout game. And if they show that they just want to keep feeding Cam Akers again in this game, like they did last game, even if he just gets 20 or 25 carries against the New York Jets, this is going to be a huge game. And it's a perfect game script. You're at home, 17 point favorites, which is <laughs> which is comical. Right. Uh, and uh, 30 point uh, over 30 point implied total. And you're looking at an offensive line that looks really good. Their running scheme, their creativity is great. And Cam Akers just looks he looks explosive. He looks powerful and shifty breaking tackles and just running with power. Um, so he looks great. So I don't see any reason why they don't just go right back to him here. And uh, really, he really sets up the play action pass for him well. But yeah, Cam Akers looks great again this week. And because he hasn't had that many blow up weeks, he's had a couple you know weeks where he's gotten production. His price is still reasonable at 6,700 on DraftKings and 6,600 on FanDuel. So Cam Akers uh, looks like another Cam Akers week there. Well, speaking of going right back to somebody, I want to go right back to the Baltimore rushing attack. And man, was that dynamic against Cleveland. So if you have Lamar Jackson, J.K. Dobbins, and Gus Edwards run it five times into the end zone against Cleveland, we know they can do it against Jacksonville if they want. 30th in the league in rushing yards allowed. So it's just going to be a matter of who gets the touchdowns. I think all of them are going to be productive when they have the rock in their hands. And finally... Baltimore is beginning to phase out Mark Ingram, and he's just sort of an afterthought. He gets a few carries, fine. But, you know, the real workhorses here are going to be Dobbins and Edwards. They both look excellent, you know, for different reasons. Dobbins, a little bit like Akers, where he's smaller and quicker. Edwards, just overpowering a guy that you just don't want to try to bring down. He's been smashing value with seven carries a week. So both of those guys in play for me on DraftKings. Unfortunately, they don't really catch passes. Lamar doesn't throw it very much. But uh, Dobbins at under 6K, Edwards at 4,400. I like both of those price tags. Yeah, that's going to be interesting is the, the, those two running backs, they look amazing every time they catch the ball or every time they, they get a carry, uh, just how powerful, explosive they are. Uh, it's going to be interesting seeing how they go into this late late playoff run. They're, they're really a team that's desperate for a win as well. So I don't think they'll have any issue just completely pounding Jack, the Jacksonville Jaguars in the run game to make sure right. they win this game and, and, and play it safe because they really need to win to stay in the playoff count here. And yeah those are two young explosive running backs. And like you said, that's key that they're finally uh, phasing out Ingram because put your best players on the field and they pretty much load manage these guys all, all year. So it's time to to feed them. They're ready to eat now. I think. Yes, they are. Yeah. And it's, and there's enough to go around for all of them, I think because of the the way this game's going to play out. Um, Yeah. Let's go to uh, another guy who's looked pretty good when he's gotten the ball. He's been kind of limited in his, in his amount of carries is, for the San Francisco 49ers, I'm looking at Jeff Wilson Jr. here. 
So, I mean, San Francisco, they, they like to usually hoard like four or five running backs, and you just never know which guy's going to be good. For the most part, Raheem Moster was supposed to be the guy, but he's been in and out of the lineup. And then all of a sudden, Jeff Wilson Jr. just like comes out of nowhere, you know, a few weeks ago, and, and he's looked great when he's been in there. Now, all of a sudden, Moster is trending towards being out here. So if you can confirm that Moster is going to be out, you can fire up Jeff Wilson Jr. And by the way, it doesn't hurt. He's going up against the Dallas Cowboys, who's been atrocious against the run this 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 year. You know, they they look like there's you can drive a semi truck through the holes that they're you know that these guys are running <laughs> against when you're playing the Dallas Cowboys. So Jeff Wilson Jr. Obviously, San Francisco's known for their great run blocking and their great run blocking scheme, that zone concept, you know, and just the misdirection and the way the way they play there. So Jeff Wilson Jr is looking for a full workload in a great matchup um, in, a, in a game where they should be ahead and uh, keep in a competitive game but have to really run the ball. And uh, his price has been cheap because there's been so many injuries and so many running backs in and out of the San Francisco lineup. So you can get this discounted price of 5800 on FanDuel and 5100 on DraftKings in a with the guy with Jeff Wilson Jr. to me that looks like he's going to be uh, uh, you know getting most of the production in a really good matchup for a really good running team. So that's why I love Jeff Wilson Jr. this week against the Dallas Cowboys, and uh, I think I'm looking for him to have a huge breakout game here. Yeah, I love him as well. If Mostert is out, so great spot there. If you want to pivot there and get more of a GPP option, you could go to Kenyon Drake. Similar price range, 5,500 on DraftKings. And I think he'll be lower owned compared to the other running specialists we've been discussing on our podcasts in that game with Murray, Hertz, and uh, uh, Sanders. So Drake at 5,500, you saw he got 23 carries last week uh, against the Giants. So you got to love the volume and you can you can be uh, productive against Philly on the ground. So Drake Drake is an option there for me as well. All right, Shane, so we got to explain the two ways that folk can become members at DFS Coach Talk. If you want to take the next step after listening to these podcasts and get our lineups, you can. And we give out full lineups on FanDuel for every NFL slate, a cash lineup, and a GPP lineup. And we'll give you plenty of coaching to try to help you figure out which contests to select so you get long-term profitability. That's our goal in uh, this industry with you. Um, so that's the FanDuel situation. On DraftKings, we give out the full coach's clipboard with highlighted plays and pivots, uh, every main slate uh, in the NFL as well. So the two ways you can do it. If you're into sports betting and DFS, go to betus.com.pa, deposit $149. You're going to get to use that money on BetUS to bet on whatever you want, and you get a free membership with us all the way until April 1st. You get access to all of our sports, all of our lineups, all winter long. So jump on that. It's a tremendous offer. If you're not into sports betting, go to DFSCoachTalk.com, our website. Sign up for your membership there. $149 gets you the same length of time all the way until April 1st. Same all access to all of our sports. So you just can't beat it, Shane. No, what a, it's a, a amazing offers that, that we have right now in – you could easily, you know, win way more than what you put into you know, that membership. Even if you had like one of the three or four month memberships, you could win that in one slate with the way our members are. We've had several members that have put in small amount of money, you know, fifty dollars, and now have thousands in their in their DraftKings or FanDuel account. So if you use the correct, you know, bankroll management in the correct contest selection, which we coach people on constantly, by the way and teach them how to win in DFS and provide great, great picks for them and great, uh, you know, uh, you can ask us questions on the game day before lock and get our opinion on different pivots and different plays. So it's very valuable to have access to our discord and have access to all the information and everyone shares it. It's a great community that we can all, you know, win together in there. And, and it's, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, looking forward to week 15 here. Yes, as am I. So if you have any questions, just play back the podcast or go find us on Twitter at DFS Coach Talk, and we'll answer all of your questions there to get you uh, a membership. And we give out the lineups about 45 minutes before lock. So get in here on Thursday if you want the Thursday night lineups or get in uh, Friday or Saturday if you want the Sunday main slate lineups. And oh, by the way, we're giving out NBA preseason lineups too. So uh, get in now and we'll uh, hopefully share in some big winnings with all of you. So Thank you so much for your support. 
Um, hit the subscribe button on YouTube and you'll hear when our other podcasts post. If you missed the quarterback show or the wide receiver tight end show, make sure to check those out. All right, that'll do it for the week 15 preview. On behalf of Shane Caldwell and the rest of the DFS Coach Talk team, I'm Andrew Hansen. We'll see you next time as we look to crush it in DFS.